in here are two examples of the desktop machines I'm going to talk about. So sorry for the power cords, but one of them is actually physically attached. You can't remove it. So we'll start that, take a look as we go. This one has the great, I'll start it in a second, but boy, when this comes around, appreciate the early 1970s space age styling. <laughs> All right, one of my missions when I do talks with some of these things is try to encourage uh, additionally uh, addictive collecting behavior. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. Uh, and you're going to see that tonight when I encourage you to start collecting every Commodore Scientific they've ever made. Oh, you really will want to do that. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, here, I wanted to talk about some desktop scientifics that I define as having trig functions that are not HP and not the SR60 from Texas Instruments. I mean, we know the HP91 that's a desktop scientific. We know the HP92 that's the financial. And I'm not talking about monstrous machines that fit the size of a bus or something. I'm not talking about the $20,000 Wangs from 1960-something. We're talking about things this size, as you see going around. Okay? I want to encourage you to get more familiar with some of those and maybe say, oh, I'd really like to have one of those lined about to impress my friends when they come over, yeah, my friends while they're still your friends. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, I picked essentially some examples from 1974 to 1977. That seems to be kind of the range that a lot of these fall into. Uh, as I say, it's another set of machines you really should collect, consider collecting. You know you want to. Uh, I'm not interested in the huge desk machines, and I've arbitrarily limited it to smaller desktop type of machines. I know that's arbitrary, but you know I'm the one giving the talk, so that's what I decided. Uh, and they have to have trig or greater. I don't care if it's got a square root. That's not a scientific, in my yeah. opinion. I need to know the height of a pole given the length of its shadow and the angle to the sun. I mean, everybody has to do that constantly. So I've got to have that, even though I need a very long power cord to figure it out as I walk around. Uh, so what is out there? What is out there? Well, CompuCorp. Uh, CompuCorp is probably one of the brands that most of us would be familiar with. These show up on eBay a good bit. They're relatively big, and they did a lot of a lot of models, more than I really thought. There are ten hand, uh, handheld, they called them, models available. From all the way from the scientists to some up here that have a model number with no name associated with them, all the way to a couple of them that were some bond traders. These are what you're talking about. Uh, nice, lovely displays, big, fat, in some ways, ugly buttons. Um, these guys rarely seem to work when I have tracked a couple of them down, which is why I don't have one anymore. And um, they, they're, they're certainly, they're just big boys. They really are. They're bigger in many ways than these guys, and they don't look like your traditional desktop calculator of any sort that you might have seen on a desk somewhere in a business in the, in the 1970s. Um, that one's real interesting because that one, of course, I showed is about the same time frame as the HP 65, and they were both programmable. So uh, they certainly got that. That would have been a big pocket if Bill Hewlett had had that. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, just some, there are quite a few uh, CompuCorp, some of them are labeled Monroe, but uh, CompuCorp, you can find those on eBay. Find those on eBay. Uh, Rockwell. Rockwell, one of the examples getting passed around is a Rockwell. They made a series of three desktop calculators that culminated in a scientific. They made other desktops, but uh, this is the 310, the first one of these three, right? And that's essentially a basic stupid adding machine. I mean, it does nothing. I mean, who knows what all the different varieties of subtotals could be, but uh, that one's the 310. Then you get to this, you get to lovely 330. And when you look at that, you're like, ooh, it's got a square root button, right? So it's, it's not scientific, no trig, but look at that, 14 digits. So you get your square root to 14 digits on it at least. It still probably can't handle the national debt. Who knows what that is these days? Um, but uh, the, the 330, eh, that still doesn't fall into my arbitrary classification scheme. But then you get to the 350. That's the one that Roger Hill is playing with right now. It has finally, right, trigs, logarithms, polar to rectangular in degrees, minutes, seconds. I had seen this in a 1975 uh, uh, Olympic sales company catalog. Uh, 
Thomas uh, from Detroit got me a copy of that. And I'd never seen one in, in reality until I found one on eBay. Lovely, lovely machine to me because trig, inverse trig, I mean all these different various functions, x to the y over there. The problem it's got, sadly, it's got eight digits, not 14. And the accuracy on the trig is six. <laughs> wow. Uh, and when did these come out? 1974-75. Uh, I'm sure it's the chipset it's using. Yeah. Uh, notice the buttons. It's store, S-T-R, yeah. and recall for the mnemonic. Uh, and it's got X to the Y over there with the addition operators. And no matter what, no matter what you do, it has uh, exponent shown. Five plus three, zero, zero over there is the exponent. You cannot suppress it in any way. So it's a, I love the machine, but uh, those, those irritate me. So that stays in the closet a lot. This is the other one that's going around. Monroe made a couple of specific models. Uh, the 1930 was statistics oriented. It had two user defined keys. That's what I want you to see there. Whoops, and I turned it off or something there. there we go. How about that? One and two, these are your two user defined keys. The way you define them is with these mechanical sliding switches up here at the top. If you want one to be this function over here, you mechanically slide that switch over and then press one right there and it'll execute that function. Really strange. But this one over there has uh, standard deviation, linear regression, uh, does not have trig, but it had enough of the you know, more sophisticated statistical things that I, I, I grandfathered this in there. That's a zoom in, if you can see, of the mechanical switches up here. Uh, it has some T statistics. Okay, some st oh, wow. students T statistics up there. Sweet. As well as uh, some other ones, F and chi-square, I think. Wow. So pretty, pretty sophisticated. Yeah. I Jack. think with the Monroe, I remember right. that my father and father-in-law both had uh, Monroe calculators, mechanical Monroe calc, and they had the same kind of Switch, mechanical bank, switch. And, or if you wanted to multiply, you had to move the whole carriage over one place. I think it was a matter of thinking, old style mechanical thinking brought forward into an electrical mm -hmm. yeah. paradigm. Uh, I think you're right. Sadly, my number one uh, user time key doesn't work anymore. So uh, I can get one side of all the special functions, but not the other. This is the one that's being floating around right here. This is the one that has a trig, uh, and that's the one that. Uh, uh, Eric's looking at right now, so you can. How take many a look registers? At that. Uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's story. I, I don't even know. Let's say three because yes, one three. there is a queer one through three as a special function. But up here, you get pi as a special function, a user defined key for pi. Yeah. And over on the other side, it's got a lot of coordinate conversions and degrees minute second conversions. Common log is up there, and then uh, standard deviation and average and stuff like that. So. I, I, this, it's the curvy nature of it. It's almost like a Taurus in a calculator with no right angles. Um, of course, the uh, Soviets made quite a few uh, desktop calculators, uh, as well as a lot of others. That's the MK45. It's got trig, logs, factorial, and a lot more. So sometimes you can find those electronica uh, calculators uh, on eBay. And then you got Sharp. Sharp made the PC1001. It was programmable. Trig, hyperbolics, logs, and more, 10 plus 2 digits, and there it is. That's a, to me, that's a lovely industrial design. You certainly have good contrast because you can see those shift functions on the front slope of the key or the flat slope of the key, and uh, zoomed in a little more. It has an interesting oh, future, I mean, a, feature, a function choice on here, right? I see the trig. Look at 7, 8, 9, a sine, cosine, tangent. Where are the inverse trigs? 1, 2, 3. Why in the world not put them next to it, right? Good. And then you see hyperbolic trig. Where's the inverse hyperbolic trig? Yeah. Not there. Who so, needs them anyway? Very strange, very strange. Programmability here means repeating a series of keystrokes. So this was the inspiration for the HP 20B. I'm kidding, Kim. But I love the, uh, the Shark PC 1001. This is the white whale. You spot this, I really would like to hear from you. Victor made a large series of some really big desktops. This one looks a lot like the size of the Rockwell that's being passed around. That is a, uh, a zoomed in image from that same Olympic sales company catalog. I've been staring at that in that catalog since I was like in the eighth grade. Uh, I would like to have one of those just because I remember looking at it so many years ago. It's essentially trig, probably the same feature set in many ways as that Rockwell. 
There's a nice visible desk between. They also made some really cute ones. That's got a little cute aspect to it. I don't know why, but I see that and I'm like, oh, it's cute. Um, that one has sine, cosine, tangent, and inverse key. Lots of wow. digits, 14 digits on that guy. Wow. This one is another real good one. Commodore made, to my knowledge, one desktop scientific calculator. Mm. Uh, the 1540, scientific, 10 digits plus two, and it has buttons that are very similar, if not like the, the same. Pet, the pet I think it's the same as the original Commodore PET computer for the buttons. This one appears to have been really used quite a bit because the keys have worn off. Again, the designer of this went to work down in Australia calculator operations for the 49G. <laughs> uh, what? Is that a technical foul? Uh, what time? Here, what Hurry. time? What time is it? It's eleven, uh, almost eleven twenty. Almost eleven twenty. Well, that's good. We can go to at least eleven thirty. Uh, Richard and I have been fussing at each other all weekend. Here's a good view here with all and of the uh, keys still on there. I have bought one of these. Actually, I got Velotic to buy it for me. It's at his house, but because of some illnesses in my transportation <laughs> scheme. With Jeff Quickfall, I don't have it yet. I was hoping to have it here and have it plugged in for you to see. Why do these things? Of course, there's a lot more of these. But look on eBay. There's an entire world out there beyond HP. And now, of course, you're all looking at the TIs daily. But there's an entire world beyond those machines that you might find some interesting tidbit to play around with. There are HP models. There's that SR60 more and more. Expand your horizons. Collect one or more or two of these. And if you see that white whale, Victor, VS230, give me a call. <laughs> That's it. Wow. How about that? 